So now I'm going to talk about the assumptions of the ideal gas law. So for a gas to be considered ideal, uh, the following conditions must be satisfied. First of all, you must have a large number of gas particles that obey Newton's laws of motion. Secondly, the volume of those gas particles uh, must be negligible when compared to the volume occupied by the gas as a whole. So negligible means so unimportant that it can be disregarded. So the volume of the gas particles is so small that it can be disregarded is, is what the second condition says. The third condition is that the only forces that act on the gas particles come, <clears throat> come from elastic collisions between the gas particles uh, that have negligible duration. So in other words, they last only uh, for an instant. And uh, an elastic collision is an encounter between two bodies uh, in which the total kinetic energy of the two bodies after the, the encounter is uh, equal to the uh, total kinetic energy of the bodies before their encounter. So energy is conserved in an, uh, in an elastic collision. So, like I said, these three conditions must be uh, satisfied for a gas to be considered ideal. So a gas that does not behave ideally is what we call a real gas. So for a real gas, uh, you know, maybe your, maybe your number of uh, gas particles isn't so large, um, maybe the, uh, you know, the gas particles don't have a negligible volume, and maybe there are other forces that act on the particles uh, other than these elastic collisions. So anytime you, you study an actual gas in a laboratory, it's not going to behave 100% uh, ideally. Um, if, if it, there's just no way that it can because, you know, first of all, particles have a volume. And second of all, uh, those gas particles are going to uh, interact with each other in some, in some other way other than just pure elastic uh, collisions. So based on these three things, um, Based on these three conditions, uh, a real gas can actually behave more ideally at high temperatures and low pressures. So if you're trying to study a gas and you want to apply the, uh, the ideal gas law equation, PV equals nRT, uh, your best bet is to carry out the experiment at high temperatures and at low pressures. These are the conditions uh, in which a real gas starts to behave more ideally. So there you go. There's just a quick lesson on the differences between uh, ideal and real gases.